this week's episode we had on Dr. Bill Dorfman. Spoken to Dr. Dorfman in the past and still managed to uh, learn about his incredible career. Neki, how do you think that went? Honestly, it was a whirlwind. I'm just blown away by someone who has the same education as we do can just develop so much and is just a serial entrepreneur and just seems to make amazing products. And I wish I had more time with them so I could learn like, you know, how do you develop a product from conception to production? Um, that, that was just an awesome glimpse into his life. Hey, to tell you the truth, I felt a little insecure for most of it. Cause I'm like, wow, like, like you said, he's a dentist. It's not like he has something you know, over us or, 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 you know, some sort of education that I can blame and be like, oh yeah, he has an MBA, you know, that's, yeah, that's kind dude, of what's expected. I felt the same way last night. I was sitting in bed and I was a little nervous. Like I never get nervous. I love talking to people, but I was like, <laughs> this is, this is like the dude, like you see him on TV. Like he's, he's America's dentist. You do feel a little insecure talking to the guy. He just, he's, he's done so much and he's a, he's a Titan in our industry. Right. So, um, I also think it's really cool that he gave dentistry street credit. Like he's the one that, that, you know, really got cosmetic dentistry out there. And, um, he's helped a lot of other dentists because he's driven patients and through that door, you know, seeking those products like zoom whitening or, uh, you know, other like, you know, veneers and all that kind of stuff. Cause he's shown the world what's possible for dentistry. So I think all dentists out there, um, old Dr. Dorfman, a, a big high five there. For sure. And he's, you know, like he's had a lot of accomplishments and he's done a lot in his career. But what I found most impressive about him is when I first reached out to him, probably, you know, two years ago, um, you know, he just came on the podcast. I didn't have to tell him. I didn't have to, you know, boast how many followers we had in the first, the majestic month. Like I never had to do any of that. He just hopped on and he's just like, yeah, man, when it's done, shoot me a text. And he gives me his number after. So it's really? it's just wild how, you know, he's like I said, he's accomplished a lot. You know, he's not, he's not afraid to to tell you how much he's actually done with his career because it's been a lot, but you know, the humility and the, the, the humbleness that, you know, comes from probably him coming from nothing, right? It's not like he had this incredible upbringing. He came from, you know, pretty much nothing. So I really appreciate that about him. Yeah. I, I, I totally hear that. I, uh, you know, as someone who's tried a lot of things and may not have succeeded in most of those things. I just wish there was, you know, those, those small questions you can just ask someone and, and they would tell you the answer. Like, you know, how do you go from like a normal dentist to, to building something? And I know a lot of it has to do with the people you meet, but um, I feel like a lot of people with great ideas struggle with that. Like, you know, that first initial step, cause I don't, like, don't get me wrong. I don't have any good ideas, <laughs> but, uh, I, I wish, I wish that, you know, those, those small steps were, were laid out. And, and I guess that's the important importance of having a great mentor. Hey, Akil. Yeah. Are you familiar with yes theory on YouTube? Yes theory. On, no, tell me. I, I'm not super familiar with them, but in my exposure to them is it's just this group of guys that, you know, they kind of said yes to everything and, you know, they're, you know, sort of like a Mr. Beast before Mr. Beast just do crazy things like fly, ask a girl on a date on the street and then fly her to like Bangkok and, you know, do these incredible things. And it's almost like there's so much that can come from, you know, as you'll hear about in the podcast to the listeners, there's so much that'll come from just the smallest thing of you taking that risk. And, you know, in his case, going to that event and then meeting that guy and then that turned into discus. And then he sold that for like 1.3 billion. Like yeah. that's, an incredible story that just started from the small little thing, which he could have just turned down and that would have changed the trajectory of his life. Oh, totally. It, it, the funny part of this whole thing is I'm going to go back to, you know, pulling teeth. And yet one of our colleagues is <laughs> living this completely different life just from that one event. Do you know what I mean? It, it changes whole, whole trajectory. And, you know, for a lot of the listeners out there, that small event could, could change your trajectory as well. So, you know, maybe there is something to be said for uh, the yes theory out there. Uh, um, except, you know, I've, I've heard of that before, but I just didn't know it's called the yes theory, but this podcast, I wish we had like two hours with them. It ended up being really quick and it was, <laughs> uh, you know, he had, he had some car troubles in between, so we have to kind of splice it together. But even though it's, you know, shorter than a normal episode, I think it'll be something that the listeners will take a lot away from, you know, even if you have to listen to it twice, I think <laughs> it's still worth it. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I appreciated the opportunity. I feel like m maybe we're, you know, mini celebrities now, now that we know them. No, <laughs> by association, I don't <laughs> think that's how it works, but <laughs> whatever, man, I'm taking it.
Yeah, good stuff. All right, guys, enjoy the episode. Is he the only dentist to make it into GQ? Am I am I right, Dr. Dorfman? I am. I'm also the only dentist who's written a New York Times bestseller. Hey, there you I'm go. I'm also the only dentist who was knighted. I'm also really? the only dentist who was on two primetime TV shows. I'm also the only dentist who grew a company from zero to $1.3 billion in sales and sold it. And I'm also the only dentist who's helped raise over $50 million for children's charities. So I'm the only dent. Oh, and the last, I'm the only dentist ever to receive a lifetime achievement award from the um, United Kingdom's Dental Association, which was incredibly amazing. I went there the beginning of December and I thought, you know, I haven't spoken in the UK in probably 15 years. So I called both dental schools in London and they said, oh, we'd love to have you talk to the students, but the only time we could do it would be like Friday at five o'clock. And I'm like, no one's going to show up. I had 200 students. It it was amazing. And you know what they said to me? A student came up and said, you know, doc, you go to dental school, you learn how to do endo and perio and pedo. No one teaches you how to be successful. No one teaches you how to like build a career and all of the, you know, different things that you can pursue as a dentist. And, you know, so I, I speak at dental schools all over the country. And my opening line is always this. I've had a career unlike any other dentist in the history of dentistry. I know that because Oprah told me that on TV, right? I'm not here to brag. I'm not here to boast. I'm here to tell you what I did. So you can copy genius because that's what I did. I copied genius. I copied people that were successful. And then my goal was always to make it better. So I said, I'm standing here hoping that whatever I tell you will inspire you to do more. I want to see the next dentist do something phenomenal that, that, that I haven't done. And, and students love it. it. I have so much fun. And this year when I went and I spoke, I brought in samples of my new products. I'm launching two big new products this year, which are going to be amazing. So it was, it was a blast. Unreal. Unreal. Who were some of those mentors that you you copied? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, Gordon Christensen, you know, um, I mean, I learned cosmetic dentistry from Dr. Vogel, Stanley Vogel. Uh, We lost him, but I mean, he was the first big celebrity dentist. I I worked as an associate. This was, this was in the, in the late eighties. And my first day I saw Linda Evans, who was like the star of dynasty. It was like the biggest TV show in the world. Flip Wilson, who was the biggest comedian at the time. And then one of our California senators, but like every day was like that. And, you know, I grew up this, I grew up poor. Like I never met people like that. And, you know, what he taught me wasn't how to do better dentistry. What he taught me was how to talk to these people You know, I mean, people always say, well, do you treat stars differently? Here's the deal. When your whole career is based on your appearance, yeah, it's a different deal. You know, when I treat Victoria's Secret models, that's what they make money for is their appearance. You know, so it is different. You know, the stakes are higher, the pressure's on, and you got to deliver. 
So how do you, uh, how do you deal with that expectation? Like, uh, like the first time you've had a, a celebrity in your chair and you're unsure what to do or, or something goes wrong, how do you, how do you handle, you know, the complications, the expectations that are put on you? Do you find any of this difficult? Like, can you talk about so, that? It's, I've never been in a situation where everything goes wrong. Like, this is a weird thing. When uh, I, I worked in a, when I graduated dental school, I worked in a clinic with 20 dentists from around the world, good dentists. And I was sitting there and I just had this epiphany. And it's like, one day, I, 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 not in Switzerland, I'm working on this woman named Lillian Ravel. I don't even know if she's still alive. She was, she was up in years at the time. She was touted as the greatest psychic in the world. And I'm like, all right, I'm not like into this, but all right. And I'm working. And you know, when you're working, you can tell that somebody's like looking and like, let people just close yeah. their eyes. She's like, and at one point she goes, stop. Has stopped. She goes, I know what you're thinking. And honest to God, in my brain, I said, no, you don't. Because I'm not thinking about anything. I'm literally on autopilot. So this is what I'm thinking. And I said, what? She goes, you're not thinking at all. You're on autopilot. I'm like, and, <laughs> I mean, it's so crazy. Of all the things I do, for me, dentistry is just like, it's where I'm supposed to be. I don't know. It, 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 just, it just happens. It just works. Um, I've never had a situation I couldn't solve. And sometimes I come up with the most bizarre solutions for things and they work, you know? And I think one of the ways that I'm able to deliver on cosmetic dentistry is I'm the only dentist in LA who has my own chair side lab technician right there with me all the time. So if I'm doing veneers and I need to change the color or change the shape or add a contact or, 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 or maybe kind of build out a margin or give it tissue, I do it right there. And, you know, the other thing I love about dentistry, which basically you can't do as a plastic surgeon, when you go in to get your nose done or any other surgical, you're asleep. The surgeon does it. They basically try to do what you want them to do. And then you wake up with, you know, what you got. And then we don't always know how you're going to heal. Well, teeth aren't like that. So when I have a big case, I basically try it in. Well, here's how we do it. First, you come in and we do a mock-up with the patient, not numbering just to kind of give them a preview of what it's going to be. Once they approve that, we prep the case, we prepare the teeth, they leave with temporaries in the shape of the mock-up. So the way that I can kind of guarantee success is when a patient first comes in for me to do a cosmetic case, the first thing I do is I do what's called a mock-up. And I basically use resin and I form the teeth so the patient has input and they can tell me, you know, I want that longer or shorter or wider or whatever. We pick the color together and then we prepare the teeth and then the patients will leave with the mock-up as kind of a trial smile. So if there are things that the patient doesn't like, they let me know or they come in and we kind of modify it and we give that to the lab. Then on the seat date, the date that we finish, we take off the temporaries, we try everything in, and we let the patient see it. And on Extreme Makeover, I had to film the reveal like it was the final thing. So I developed a technique, and the technique is where instead of giving you shots 
in the front here, which numbs your lip and everything and makes it hard to see what your smile looks like, we actually numb you from the inside. And there's a special injection that we can give that numbs the teeth, but not the lips. And we can try in your, your new teeth and let you actually see what it's gonna look like when you smile and talk and everything. And then once you say thumbs up, I literally have my patient sign a form saying, I approve of the shape, the color, the size, the this, the that, the other. because a lot of patients, don't realize that once you put them on, there's not a lot you can change. I mean, you can basically change the shape a little bit, but if I put them on and you want them darker or lighter, we can't yeah, do it. Yeah. But Dr. Dorfman, how do you, how do you manage the, the pressure? Cause there's gotta be an immense amount of pressure placed on you as a dentist, you know, taking care of these celebrity smiles. And even if you do a mock-up and even if, you know, you cement it and they sign it off and it, then they it, come it, back to you, like, how do you manage that pressure? It, you listen to people, you listen to people and you listen to what they want. And you have to be incredibly honest and transparent with them and tell them exactly what you can and cannot do, you know? I mean, if a patient really insists on me doing something that's physically not possible, I just tell them and, you know, I tell them what I can do. And if they don't understand that or they don't believe me, I always say, get a second opinion. And then they always come back, right? But, you know, it's, it's communication. It's really getting the patient to understand what realistic expectations are. So right. like, you know, you explain it to your patient and, and uh, no matter how high profile they are, you, you talk it out with them, but like, do you ever stay up at night concerned about cases? Like d does dentistry stress you out at all? Cause we all no. have patients that, that, you know, wake us up in the middle of the night. Oh, I wonder how they're doing. No, do you do no, those I, moments at all? Dude, the one thing I do in my life better than dentistry is sleep. I hit the <laughs> pillow and I'm out for the count. Like I'm out. I mean, I literally fall asleep within two or three minutes of laying down and I yeah. sleep like a baby. Listen, I'm 64 years old in my entire life. In my entire life, I've never had a bad night's sleep. Wow. That's Not one. <laughs> I, like I've never laid in bed and tossed and turned. Yeah. Like I just turn my brain off and that's that. Man, I wish I'm, I'm always worried about my patients, no matter if I'm on the beach in Maui or, or in my bed. I'm no, I worry you know, about them. That patient I, I worry about them a normal amount, but when, when, when I turn off, it's lights out. Yeah. That's funny. That's, uh, that's incredible. Dr. Dorfman, how do you manage um, running a business, like running your, running your dental practice, you know, you, you're working nonstop and then you had the ability to grow a $1.3 billion company. How do you manage time? How, how, how did you do all that all while working full time and being on TV? One of the hardest thing for entrepreneurs is giving up power and I realized very early that if I tried to do everything on my own, I would have no life. And the other thing that's hard for entrepreneurs to accept is I call it the 80% rule. If I hire you to do something and you get 80% right, I'm good. Like you just can't worry over the 20% because no one's going to do it like you. But in the, in, in the alternative, if you actually tried to do everything, you, you couldn't. Well, I, I think that one thing that a commonality that you share with a lot of the larger than life dentists that I've interviewed is that, you know, I, I shared the same sort of sentiment when uh, Howard Fran came on, we started talking and then he started talking about how he manages his patient schedules and how he has to, you know, do these like random day to day things that you don't think that you know, a lot of people of that sort of status do, but it's a reality in order to run their clinic. What do you do? No, sort of... I don't, I don't do any of that. You don't do all. any of it? Zero. I have 
three amazing women in my life that I couldn't live without. Sunette, my office manager, is a rock star. She literally runs that office. When I show up at work, she just points me in the right direction and tells me what I'm doing. So I never schedule, I never think about money or collections or anything. She, if, when I'm doing a consult with you, she stands there, you know, I'll say, okay, we're doing an implant. She'll get the implant part. She'll, I mean, she organizes everything, everything, everything. She calls the labs and makes sure the cases are on time. I mean, like everything, right? How, how do you keep someone like that motivated if they're so integral I to you? I pay your... her a shit ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> like you wouldn't even believe how much she makes, but she's worth every penny, That's every so penny. I mean, That's she's so probably great. the highest paid office manager in the world. And I'm proud of it. Right. Number two, Nicole, Nicole is my PA. She does all my personal stuff. She books my flights, my kids flights, my insurances my this like all the stuff you need to do in your life i don't do nicole does it god forbid if either of them ever like disappeared for anything i'd be lost Who's and the then third? my ex-wife evelyn she runs my family we have three beautiful children i mean unfortunately our our marriage didn't last but we're, she's family she's my best friend and, you know, she helps organize all the family stuff. And honestly, without those three ladies, I, 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 I'd be lost. Man, I'm, I'm best friends with my ex-wife too. So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it works out. It's, it's nice, to, nice to have, uh, you know, family connection um, in there as well. Um, I've, I just have a question for you. How, do you. how did you start Discus as a dentist? Like, how did you come up with the idea and grow the business. Like I've always been so this interested is a in how really, people grow in businesses. This is a really funny story. And I've done a whole TED talk on this. Every time I've committed to something purely out of philanthropy, it ended up being this financial windfall for me. So here's the story. I'm a fitness fanatic, right? So I'm at yep. the gym working out. Woman walks up to me, Cynthia Hearn. I don't know her. She says, would you like to help raise money for children's cancer research? Well, I mean, how can you say no to that? But like, I wasn't wealthy. I, I had just started my practice. I was this young guy. And I said, well, well, yeah, but you know, I'm not like loaded or anything. She goes, that's okay. She goes, you are a dentist, right? I said, yeah. She goes, and you're single, right? I'm like, yeah, weird. She goes, well, we're doing a bachelor auction at the MGM and we need 10 bachelors. Would you do that for a thousand women? I'm like, easy. Yes. <laughs> All right. I mean, this was in the eighties. This would never happen today. Right. But anyhow, it was humiliating and weird, but the guy in line next to me was Robert Heyman. Robert Heyman is the son of Fred Heyman. Fred Heyman created Beverly Hills. Giorgio Cosmetics, 273. And Robert grew up in that industry. He was an MBA from Boston. And we became best friends. And I said, listen, I'm doing a lot of tooth whitening. And I know that because the company, it was called Omni, called me and said, hey, doc, you know, you do more tooth whitening than any other dentist in the country. I'm like, well, you know, I'm in Beverly Hills. Hollywood's there. I mean, you know. And, and I said, you know, it's, I've been thinking about it. And it's like, I have a bunch of ideas that would really make your product better. They're like, dude, you're 29. We don't care. Click. So I called Robert up. I said, hey, do you want to get into the tooth whitening business? And um, we sat down and we made a little business plan. And we were both broke. And we took out $20,000 on our American Express cards, and we formed Discus Dental with Night White. Night White was our first product. And, you know, we're selling onesies and twosies. And then out of the blue, Woody Oaks had a, a newsletter called The Profitable Dentist. We didn't even know him, where he ranked 
Night White as the number one tooth whitening product in the world, boom, it exploded. So that was the first explosion. Then the second explosion happened when ABC put me on Extreme Makeover. And all of a sudden I'm on primetime TV every night, you know, with millions and millions of people watching this and our sales went through the roof. We had grown and plateaued at like 76 million in sales, which was good. And all of a sudden we're at 101 million, the next year 136. And my third year on the show, we were at $200 million in sales. Holy cow. That's, and then in incredible. 2010, which was about three years after Extreme Makeover went off the air, we sold the company to, to, uh, to Philips. Wow. As someone, as someone that's like a, you know, obviously has done really well in dentistry, but, you know, you clearly have this ambition at 29 going to, you know, some of these hot shots of, of Beverly Hills and, and, and pitching yourself. What drives you? Like, was it childhood trauma? Like, what, what, what motivates no, you? I, it's, I'm intrinsically driven. I don't know. People ask me that all the time. I just, it's, it's fun. It's fun. You know, I want to, here, let me get a, a, a sample of something. Hold on. Um, so I've got two new products launching this year, right? The first one is I couldn't do whitening because I signed a non-compete. The first one is Poof, okay? So you can buy this on Amazon. They're teeth whitening strips, okay? That's still the most common preferred take-home tooth whitening. But I made these strips better than anyone's on the market. They taste great, unlike the others. Zero sensitivity, unlike the others. They're comfortable on your teeth, unlike the others. It dissolves in 10 to 15 minutes. So stains disappear, strips disappear, and poof, your teeth are white. And they're awesome. So you can get those on Amazon. And the second product I'm launching this year are called Kickballs. And they're caffeinated gumballs. You can go on our website, K-I-C-K-B-A-L-L-Z. And not only do they have 110 milligrams of caffeine in it, but they give you fresh breath and they don't stain your teeth like coffee. So if you want caffeine and you don't want stained teeth, kick balls is the way to go. That's, that's incredible. Hey, uh, Dr. Dorfman, when you have an idea like that, like whether it's poof or, or kick balls, how do you um, like go from idea to product? Like, who are you working with? How do you, do you just know the I mean, I in the industry or how do, you, how do you do that? I basically run it by a lot of people. And if they think it's a good idea, I create prototypes and then I have patients come in and I test it on them. And if it flies, it flies. So I'm super excited, but I, and I got to go, I have a hard out, but there's one thing I definitely want to say, my mantra for life, learn so you can earn and then return. And my biggest return is the LEAP Foundation. I run a motivational leadership program every summer for high school and college kids, age 15 to 25 at UCLA. It's a nonprofit. It's one week long, and we get amazing speakers. Richard Branson, Mark Wahlberg, Michael Strahan, Anthony Hopkins, Kathy Bates. I mean, on and on and on and on. So if you want more information, go to www.leapfoundation.com. And if you're a parent and you have a son or daughter who's 15 to 25, I promise you, if you send them to me, I'll send you back a better kid. Lovely. That's awesome. Lovely. <laughs> Dr. Dorfman, what a what a pleasure it was to, you know, take a take a speedy, you know, journey through your your career. Such an awesome career you've had. Uh lovely having you back on the pod. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry I have to run. I'll see you guys later. It's all good. Thanks, Dr. Dorfman. All right, bye.